If you're one of the many people that have been asking me to make a detailed installation video for the NZXT X73, then I guess today's your lucky day. So get subscribed and let's get right into it. The first thing I like to do when I install any AIO is get the cooler prepped and ready to go. The X73 comes with a couple of different mounting brackets that work with AMD and Intel sockets. To remove and replace the brackets, all you have to do is give them a little bit of a twist, and they just kind of lock and unlock into these little tabs that are around the outside of the water block. I'm going to be installing on Intel in this video, so I'm going to get the 11.5x bracket on here. The next thing I want to do is get my fans mounted onto the radiator. Take your time here and do a bit of planning so you don't run into any issues when you go to install the cooler in your case. I'm going to be mounting in the top of my case and I'm installing the fans with the power cables facing what will end up being the back. That way they're not going to be hanging down and visible in the build. There's also a lot of talk about whether you should mount your fans in a push or pull configuration. Personally, I don't really worry too much about that. I make the decision based on the installation location in the case and aesthetics. I don't like the motor side of the fans showing, so I usually stick with push configurations. The case I'm using has a removable AIO tray, and if your case doesn't have this, don't worry about it. It just means your radiators get to mount directly to the case instead. The big advantage of having the tray is that you can mount the radiator while you're working outside the case where there's more room, and then you can just go over and slide it into place without having to deal with all kinds of stuff getting in your way. The next thing I'm going to do is get the motherboard ready for the cooler. This thing's a backplate that fits onto the back side of the motherboard, allowing you to secure the cooler. Notice it has movable mounts to support different sockets. For Intel 11.5x, I need to set these to the innermost position. I should also note that you can use the X73 on the new Intel 1700 socket, but depending on when you purchased your cooler, you may have to order a separate mounting bracket from NZXT, but recently manufactured products ship with the bracket right in the box. All we have to do here is position the backplate over the holes on the back side of the motherboard and then just press it into place. These are Intel standoffs that are going to screw into the backplate and connect the water block to the CPU using a set of four thumb screws. And these are also slotted at the top, so you can use a screwdriver to get them tightened down if you need to. Now we can turn the case around and start threading the four standoffs onto the backplate. If you're installing the X73 on an AMD AM4 system, you don't need to replace the backplate, and there's a separate set of standoffs specifically designed for that socket that come in the box. Now I'm going to get my radiator mounted into the case, and for me it just slides in nice and easy because it's already mounted onto that installation tray. The cold plate that's going to come into contact with the CPU comes with thermal paste pre-applied right from the factory, but I've installed this cooler a few times already in different systems, so I'm going to have to apply my own paste. I like to use the so-called grain of rice method where you just put a little blob in the middle of the CPU IHS and then allow the pressure of the water block to naturally sort of spread it out. Now I'm just going to lower the water block down onto the standoffs and then start securing it down with the thumb screws, tightening in a cross pattern to apply even pressure and to help get a good spread on that thermal paste. I like to get things started by hand and then finish it off with a screwdriver to make sure it's all tightly secured. Now we got to connect all the cables. This one has a single connector that plugs into the block and then on the other end there's a SATA power connector, a TAC cable for pump speed control, and an optional connector for NZXT RGB devices if you happen to have any of those. This whole thing just plugs right into a port on the water block, nice and easy. This one has a micro USB connector on one end and an internal USB on the other for connection to your motherboard. The micro USB end just plugs right into the block next to the other cable that we just plugged in. The pump tack cable is what controls the speed of the pump, and that needs to go directly into either the CPU fan or the AIO header on your motherboard. Motherboards can be set up and laid out differently, so if you're unsure where these connectors are on your board, I recommend checking the manual. Fans can either plug separately into their own individual 4-pin PWM fan headers, or you can use the included splitter cable and get them all connected together and they'll fit on one single header, and that's what I always like to do just to keep the build nice and neat and clean. Now I can just take this single connector, connect it to a 4-pin fan header on my board, and that's it for the fans. For the USB cable, you just need to plug that into a free USB header that's on your board, and it's an internal USB header, not a typical USB port that you'd see on the outside of your computer case. The SATA power cable just connects to a standard SATA connector from your power supply, and it's the same type of connector that powers a solid state drive or a hard drive. And that's really all there is to it. The installation might seem complicated when you first get everything unboxed and see all the different parts, but it's really pretty straightforward. Anyways, I hope this video helped. If it did, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content. And we'll see ya.